So welcome to our um, intermediate class today. And uh, our theme this week is around community. So last week we talked about self-love and self-care. And of course that's wonderful, but it's not enough. We need our community, we need our support, we need our loved ones. And unfortunately, as we approach the holidays, there's um, you know, less chance this year that we will see all of the people that we want to see over the holidays. So while we can't gather, we can still keep each other close in our hearts and in our thoughts and in our reaching out by phone or by email or outdoor visits. We do what we can to kind of make it work. But today, what I really want to do is celebrate community, celebrate our loved ones. We can't do life alone. Right? We would not survive. And well, of course, we need to love ourselves and support ourselves. We also need to support each other. So it's really, it's about reaching out and supporting others who are in need, but also allowing ourselves to be supported and to feel that sense of strength that comes from having a strong community. Now, you might not have a strong community around you. Um, you might be living alone. I don't know at this point. Um, and so when we talk about community, there, there could be a whole lot of different emotions that come up, right? There could be sadness that you're not going to be with your people this holiday season um, or separated as you have been for several months. But if, if possible, and this is not to say to deny any of our feelings, because I really encourage you to feel whatever is present for you, uh, but if possible, trying to celebrate those connections that we have, even if it's celebrating through sadness, right, which is also a celebration when we're sad because we can't see our loved ones, it's actually because we love them so much and we want to be with them. So again, I invite you to just be with whatever arises today, but if possible, celebrating that sense of community and support. So we will come to the mat and sit for a moment before we um, stand up and, and get more into the practice. So if you want to sit on a chair, that's fine. If you want to sit on a cushion, whatever's comfortable for you right on the ground might be fine as well. So we'll take a moment to check in with ourselves. So getting yourself as comfortable as possible. You can close your eyes if you like, if you find that helpful to focus more inward. I invite you to tune into and check in with your body. Notice how your body's feeling today. Being aware of any, anything really, any sensations that are present. And see if you can notice without labeling a sensation as good or as bad. So you're just noticing. You might notice things that are painful or tight or restricted. And I encourage you to simply notice those without judgment, without trying to push them away. And let your mind come to what feels good, what feels open or relaxed. And it's not about judging one as good and the other as bad. Or one as what we want and the other as what we don't want. Because in fact, some of our injuries are challenging areas in life can be our greatest teachers. And when we open to accept what is, we invite the possibility of change. When we create a lot of tension, close ourselves off from possibilities. And then also tune into your breath. Feel how the breath moves your body. How the breath and body are absolutely connected. We can't live without the breath or the body for that matter. So feeling that life-giving breath. Noticing your state of mind today. What's happening in your mind? Is it busy? Is there a lot going on? Is it kind of dull and hard to focus because you're half asleep? Or anything in between? And 
I'm going to invite you to check in with your feelings or emotions. Notice what's present. And knowing that we can hold grief and happiness together in the same moment. Happiness that we have these wonderful extended friends and family. Maybe some sadness that we won't perhaps see them over the holidays. Whatever is present for you, notice that without pushing anything away. Now let's bring the hands together at the heart in the state position and make a little dedication in our practice today, a little intention. So if it feels right for you, you might dedicate this practice to your family, friends, and loved ones, to those near and far, maybe those right in your own household or those perhaps on the other side of the world that you hold close in your heart. Let the effort of your practice be dedicated to those connections today. And we'll release the hands onto the knees or thighs and work with a little flexion and extension. So lifting the heart, moving in, rounding the back, chin down as you exhale. And repeating that movement several times, tuning in and checking in with your spine and how it feels as you do this movement, but always modifying as necessary to suit what your needs are today. Let's add some circles. You can circle your torso around. And again, not moving in a mindless way, but bringing your full attention, noticing where do I feel this sen feel sensation as I do this movement. The other way and see if anything changes for you. And then come back to a nice long spine. We'll bring one hand to the ground. You can just have your fingertips on the ground. If you're on a chair, you can bring your hand to the chair. Taking the other arm up, lifting up with a breath in. You can walk the hand away and bend the elbow as you go to the side. And then come up, release that arm down, and we'll do the same side. So lifting and reaching over. Just so don't worry too much about how you're breathing as long as you're breathing and just move in a flow that feels comfortable for you. Noticing how it feels in the side of your body that you're stretching. And this time we'll stay for a few breaths. So really important not to kind of jam up your shoulder on the ground, bend the elbow, move the arm away, whatever you need to to feel relaxed in that shoulder. Reaching up with the arm and then breathing into that long side. Feel the side of your waist, feel the breath moving in under the armpit, down into the hip. And then we'll come all the way up. Let's bring the hands back to the knees and we'll do a few rounds of extension and flexion before we go to the other side. You might feel a bit lopsided, so I encourage you to notice that. Be aware of that, if that's true for you. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll come back to neutral spine, so nice long spine, bringing the hand on the other side to the ground, reaching the arm up. And then reaching over to the side. And again, we'll flow with as much ease as possible in and out of this movement. So make sure you're breathing, but no particular way to breathe here. Okay, so we'll do one more and stay this time. Again, pressing down into the sit bone that corresponds to the arm that's raised, reaching up with that arm, keeping soft in the arm that's supporting you, and then breathing into that long side, the side of the waist, the hip, up into the side of the ribs, the armpit. Okay, and then come back to center, hands to the knees, and again, a few rounds of 
flexion and extension. Here you can inhale as you lift the heart, exhale as you round. After your next exhale, make your way back to a neutral spine. And we'll take the arms out to the sides. Reach out with the fingertips and spread the hands wide. You can reach back a little with the arms to feel some stretch if that feels good for you. And then we're going to wrap the arms around, one arm over the other. Bring the hands to the shoulders. Let your elbows and shoulders relax. Let your head come down. Round the upper back a bit and breathe into that space between your shoulder blades. If you feel really stiff here, you might do a little movement. So, taking the elbows a little one way and the other, just to open up each shoulder blade a bit more, or just stay stationary and breathe. As you lift your spine, open the arms, notice which arm is on top. Taking the arms wide and maybe even reaching back a bit. Big breath in and then exhale, other arm comes on top. And let the elbows and shoulders relax, lower the head down. And again, you can either just be here and breathe in this position, or you can do just a little rocking with the upper body, upper back, to open up each shoulder blade just a little bit more. And coming back, we'll open the arms wide. Bring the hands behind your back. If it's available to you, interlace your fingers. Reach down and back and find a little lift in your heart. So our arms are considered an extension of the heart and how we reach out to one another. And in times where we're feeling low or depressed, we tend to kind of round forward and be in this position. So this helps to open that space around the heart. One more breath here. And exhale and release. So if you're sitting on something or you're on a chair, you want to come down to the floor now and remove whatever is um, underneath you so that you can be right on the floor with your legs out in front and your hands supporting you behind. So starting with a long spine, we do a little side to side movement. Taking the knees one way and the other. As you do this, you'll crawl forward. You can always push yourself back with walk your hands forward. And if you feel any tension in the back shoulder as the knees go down, or if you're moving away from, you can always lift that arm as well. Okay, coming back to the center, stretch your legs out and give them a little shake. And then bend the knees a little bit and place one ankle over the opposite knee. So you might have to lean a little back to get there. And then you're going to bring the foot on the floor so that it's flat. And then use your hands behind you to lift up a little. Now, if it feels like an intense stretch for you, because we haven't done a lot of warm up for this outer hip area, you can kind of roll back and sit up. So when you roll back, you'll probably feel the stretch go off a little bit. As you sit up more, the stretch comes on a bit more. Or you can simply stay there and breathe, thinking about sending your breath into wherever you feel tightness and softening as you can. Again, try not to kind of crunch your shoulders up, but find that lift. So you're pressing into your hands, heart is lifting. Good. And then let's we'll slowly release that side and we'll come into that same position on the other side. So you start with the one leg just slightly bent on the ground. That's going to help it be a little bit easier to get your ankle up. And then you can bring the foot up to the floor. And then depending on how much you sit up here will determine how much stretch you feel. Most people are going to feel a stretch somewhere in the outer hip, but you may feel it in the inner thigh or in other areas where you might be holding tension in your own particular body. So again, you can slump back and sit up if you want to move the, the stretch a little less, a little more. Or you can stay in a position that feels like a nice easeful stretch, not a tense stretch, and relax there. A few more breaths. And 
little release. Give the legs a little shake. Okay, and then come back once more to that position with the legs a little wider. And we'll let the knees go down to one side. You're going to lift up the back arm now. Bring it behind you. You can either place it on the back leg, or if you can reach, you can come right around to the floor. And then use both hands to lift your spine tall as you move back over your back shoulder. The breaths here. And then we'll roll around to the other side. Knees down, the back arm lifts, it comes around either to the leg or the floor. And you're using both hands to lift you tall, looking back over your back shoulder. Okay, and then let's come back to the center. And you can take both legs behind you and come over onto all fours. So, little movement of cat cow, inhaling, arching, exhaling, rounding, or rounding, and going to child's pose if you prefer. We'll do a few rounds of that, bringing the spine and the hips back into alignment after twisting, side bending. Now, I'm going to move it a little bit back on your mat so you've got some room to, to move forward. And this next one is a little bit tricky. So I just invite you to, to do your best and have fun with it. If it doesn't work for you, so you can go back to what we were just doing. So we'll start by taking one leg up, taking a breath in. This is the easier part, bringing the knee toward the nose. Do this a couple of times, maybe three or four times on the side. And then let's try the other side, a few there. So reaching back and then right in towards your nose. And inhale as you reach out and then exhale. Give some space to get that knee close. A couple more here. So now this next part is a little bit trickier. So we're going to stretch out the leg again. You're going to bring it in toward your nose and then see if you can take your foot and bring it around to the outside of the knee that's on the ground. So you're crossing the back leg over the front leg. You can walk your hands forward. Shift your leg onto that front knee. Move it to the center, stretch the other leg back. You'll bring it in towards your nose, and then if possible, you're going to take that foot around so your knee comes in front of your other knee. You'll step back, bring that knee back to center, reach up. So we're basically going to crawl forward with that pattern. It's, as I said, a little bit tricky, so do your best. Or skip this one if it's not working for you. <laughs> yeah, you can use your hand up to it to kind of help it around. And then when you crawl to the front of your mat, you're going to crawl back. So if you take the leg back, this is a little bit tricky, so you're going to tuck it in behind the front knee and shift your weight. You're going to uncurl. Stretch back, tuck your knee in behind the knee that's on the ground and shift your weight. Walk your hands back and around, stretch back, tuck it back behind. Good. You're gonna crawl back to where you were. <laughs> and then eventually, You'll stretch back and bring both knees under your hips again. And let's move the hips back toward the heels. You can come onto your forearms or bring your head onto your hands on the ground. Just rock your hips gently side to side in child's pose. Okay, 
and then eventually we'll come back up to all fours. Tuck your toes under and lift up into downward dog. You can take a few breaths in downward dog, maybe walking on the spot, stretching out the calves and the ankles a little bit here. And then let's walk the feet slowly toward the hands. If you get stuck part way there, you walk the hands back to the feet, or however it works for you to get to a standing forward bench. Up the head for the staff. Take a couple of breaths here. And then we'll come all the way up, taking the arms up overhead, and releasing to your sides. Great. So now that we're upright, let's do a few circles of the wrist. We did spend quite a bit of time on the hands and knees and then downward dog. So just releasing any tension that we might have brought into the wrist. Go one way and then the other. And then just give them a gentle shake. And shake them up overhead, out to the sides. And then slowly down to the side that your whole arms go now. Right, and then let the arms hang completely. You might feel a bit of tingling or energy in your arms. So just recognize and acknowledge, feel that. And take a nice deep breath, exhale, and sink down into your heels, lift the crown of your head. And we'll take the feet a little bit wider apart, so about shoulder distance apart. Soften your knees, and we'll roll one shoulder, and then the other shoulder. So let your hips swing, let your head go. And go the other direction as well, getting into that space between the shoulder blades. I know for me that's a space that's always Kind of tight, so I always appreciate these movements that get in there. Right, and coming back to the center, let's take the hands onto the hips, soften your knees, and do a few rotations here with your hips. So again, really tuning into what you notice, what you feel. Again, dedicating our practice today to our loved ones, to our community, near and far. Right, and then coming back to the center, arms down, as if we could gather that circle together, bringing the hands overhead and bring that community spirit into our hearts. Let's take a breath here. Filling yourself up with that good feeling, or really filling yourself up with it whatever you feel. Right? It may not be a good feeling for you, so you don't want to assume. Just take the hands down and again, lift up like you could gather into your heart your loved one or loved ones. Good release. And hands back to the heart. Let's bring the feet in just a little bit. So they're about hip distance apart. Releasing the hands. And uh, we'll do a little bit of a, um, a half squat. And then we'll add a twist. So we'll come up with the breath in. As you exhale, bend your knees. Keep the heart lifted as if you're going to sit in a chair. And then lift up. We'll do that a couple of times, a couple more times. Warming up the legs. Okay, this time we'll switch it up. So bringing the hands up overhead, bring the hands down to the heart as you come to sit. Stay here, take a breath and lift the heart, lengthen the spine, but keep your knees bent. As you exhale, take your elbow down to the same side knee, press the palms together and Look up toward the ceiling behind you. And then inhale, lift up. And exhale, come to sit. Inhale, lift your heart. And then exhale, bring the other elbow down to same knee. Press into the knee, press into your palms and look back towards the elbow that's in the air or even beyond it. And then come back up, inhale. 
We'll add a forward bend. Exhale, coming down. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthening. Exhale, release the fold forward. Inhaling, coming all the way up. Good, we'll come to that half squat. Exhaling. Inhale, lift the heart. Good, exhale, elbow. Actually, I think I went this way last time. Elbow to either the same knee, or if it's available to you, you can reach the opposite knee this time. One breath here. And then we'll inhale and come up. Good, exhale, half squat. Inhale, lift your heart. And then exhale, elbow either to the same knee or if it's available, reach the opposite knee for one breath. And then we'll lift, coming all the way up. Releasing. So we'll do the same thing. Hopefully you got a chance to see whether same knee or opposite knee work better for you. And this time when we come into the pose, we'll stay for a little bit longer each side. So breathing in. Exhale, half squat. Inhale, lift the heart. And exhale, elbow down to same or opposite knee. Press the palms together and look towards the opposite elbow. Come up, lift it. And we'll breathe here. If you want to work harder, sit down a little bit more. And inhale all the way up. Exhale, let's do a forward bend before we go to the other side. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthening. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift all the way up. Palms together. Exhale, half squat. Inhale, lift your heart. Good. Exhale, elbow down, other elbow this time. Looking towards the opposite elbow. And we'll take a few breaths here. Lifting and exhale to release. Let's give everything a little shake. Shake the legs separately or just on the spot. Just let that go. Okay, and then we'll move ourselves toward the front of the mat if you're using a mat or to the front of the space that you're working in. And move into a sun salutation to keep things moving along. So feel your heels go down, heart lift. And again, like we could gather our strength by drawing in our angels or loved ones to our heart. Pause here for a moment. And then we'll inhale and lift. Sending our love out as we exhale and bow forward, letting the head down. Inhale, hands to shins, lifting the spine, and then exhale to release. Bring the hands of the fingertips down, take one leg and step back. And about drawing your back hip forward, forward hip back a little, to lengthen through the spine, and then we'll make our way back to downward dog. Couple of breaths here, and downward dog. And then you'll lower your knees down to the ground. So coming into all fours, lifting the head, lifting the tail, breathing in, rounding the back, exhale, move to child's pose. Pause here for a couple of breaths. And we'll come back up to all fours. Tucking your toes under, lifting your hips, coming to downward dog. Keep the knees a little bit. Really work on lengthening the spine, releasing the head, pressing into the arms. And whichever leg you stepped back with earlier, you're going to step forward with that same leg. So you're now doing lunge on the other side. Squaring the hips, so back hip moves a little forward, forward hip moves a little back, lengthening the spine. And then we'll step forward. Head down. 
Inhale, lengthen. Head lengthening along the length of the spine. Exhale, releasing. Inhale, coming all the way up. Bringing your palms together and exhaling back to the heart. Try that again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, big circle, soften and bend your knees as you come down. So every leg you step back with first last time, you're going to step the other leg back. Coming into lunge, squaring the hips. If you like, you can lift up in lunge here. A little more effort or challenge. If you want to work harder, bend your front knee and sink down a little more. Bend your back and then sink down even more if you want to work even more here. Covering that back knee over the ground. And then we'll step back to plank pose this time. So engaging, finding your nice long plank. The head is in line with the spine. It's not hanging down. Press into your hands. Open the space between your shoulder blades. So you're not collapsing down here. But lifting through the upper back. Lower your knees. And then lower down. Let the feet rest on the ground, the tops of the feet down, and slide your hands forward. And imagine with your forearms on the ground, hands on the ground, you're pulling back towards your hips, pressing the hips down to limit that movement and to lengthen and bring traction to the spine. And then lifting just a little. Good, breathing, lowering down. Slide your hands back. Lift up to all fours. And walk back again to child's pose for a few breaths. Any version that works for you. And we'll come back up to all fours. Tucking your toes under, lift up. And again, the same foot that you step back with, you're gonna step forward with. Back hip moves forward, forward hip moves back. Option to lift up. Again, if you want more, sink down a little more, lower the back knee and let it cover. And then hands down and step forward. Head release. Take a breath here. Inhale, hands to shins, lengthening. Exhale to release and fold forward. Inhale and lift all the way up. And exhale to release. <sighs> Come back to mountain pose. Let your breath find ease again. Sink down into your heels, lift through the crown of your head. And then shift your weight to one foot, come up with the other leg. Just rock side to side. Just kind of like you're marching on the spot. You can bring the legs up higher if you like. Really squeaky part of the floor here. I'm not sure if that comes through on the microphone. Great, and come back to both feet on the ground. We're going to take the arms to the sides. Take a breath in. As you exhale, cross your arms again over your chest. This could be your position for the eagle pose arms. Or if it's available to you, you can bring the backs of the hands together, or if possible, take your bottom hand a little closer to your face and tuck it underneath the thumb side of the other hand. So anywhere in that, in that uh, range is great. Take a breath in, exhale, and come into the half squat. Right, now notice which arm is on top. So I've got my right arm on top. I'm going to shift my weight to my right foot, keeping that right knee bent. Then I'm going to lift the other leg up. 
and bring it over. Now you can either rest your ankle there or bring your knee right over if that's available and sit down even more. Some of you might tuck your foot in behind. That's definitely not a requirement. And breathe. Good. Releasing the arms, lift up and lift that knee. And then float down. And give a little shake. Coming back to mountain pose, sinking down through your heels, taking the arms out to the side. The opposite arm will be on top now. So giving yourself a hug, maybe coming into the eagle arms if that's available. So it could be just hands back to the hands coming together towards each other or reaching the bottom hand underneath the front hand. It's a bit tricky, this one. And then bending both knees into the half squat. Again, whichever arm is on top, the opposite leg is going to lift. So we're going to, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So if you've got your right arm on top, the leg left, left leg lifts. You can either place the ankle or more traditional pose here would be to cross the thighs tightly, maybe tuck the foot in behind if that's available. But not necessary if you want to keep your toes down for balance. You're welcome. Sit down a little more. Right, and then we'll release, lift, and release down. Great. Inhale, lift both arms. Exhale, forward bend. We'll repeat that a few times. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, forward bend. And we'll do a couple more. This time we're going to add the half forward bend. So you'll come down on an exhale. Hands to the shins, come up partway on the inhale. Exhale, release. Inhale all the way up. Good. Exhale all the way forward. Inhale, part way up. Exhale, releasing. And inhale again, all the way up. And we'll release the arms down to the sides. And again, sink into your heels. Crown of the head lifts. Take a few breaths here. And then again, if you're a little towards the front of your space, so you've got room to sit back behind you. We'll inhale and lift the arms. Exhale, release forward. You can step, or you can hop the feet back if you like. You come to plank. And then from plank, lower your knees. Come to all fours. Walk the hands so that under your shoulders, you're in a comfortable tabletop position. And then inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, rounding and moving to child's pose. <clears throat> you can do that a couple more times. You can take a few breaths in child pose if you like, either resting your head on your hands or on the ground, or if it's more comfortable, you can be on the floor so you get your head hanging. And then we're going to come to sit. So if you're comfortable to sit right on your heels, you can just come right up from, uh, from your child's pose. If that's uncomfortable for your knees or your ankles, you might just sit down on the ground for a moment. We'll ultimately be coming back to this position or high kneeling in a moment. But we're going to work through the kneeling sun salutation sequence and then work with um, pigeon pose. So maybe before we get going, I'll just demonstrate pigeon pose quickly for those of you who may not be so familiar with some of the options here. 
Um, so pigeon pose stretches the outer hip and we did a little um, warm up seated for that same stretch. Um, and so I'm going to have, you can have either a cushion or a blanket handy, I'll keep those there. And, and you might just watch the screen for a second. So you're going to come up and to get into pigeon, and we won't do it yet, we'll do this part of the sequence, so you can just watch. Now you're going to bring your knee up to the uh, wrist on the same side and wiggle your foot the other direction. And then slide the back foot back, you can bring the knee down, and you want to keep your hips square. So at this point, I don't want to twist to bring that hip down. What I want to do is find a comfortable position where I'm feeling some nice stretch, and then I'm going to fill that space between my hip and the floor with a blanket or a cushion or, or whatever. It could be a block as well. Okay, so that's what your pigeon looks like, and we'll also have the opportunity to rest in pigeon. So just so you know where we're going. And you can have your crop, whatever you want to use to, um, maybe you don't need it either. You can just have it on your right side for now, so do the right side first when we get there. And then you're going to come back to either kneeling down on your feet or lifting your hips up. And this is a better position if you feel pressure on your ankles or knees when you're sitting back. So wherever you start is fine. So we'll come from here, lifting up with the breath in. Exhale, moving to child's pose. We'll inhale, come to all fours. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, high kneeling. And exhale back to where you started. So whether it was this high kneeling with arms down or sitting down and find your way there. We'll do that sequence again. Inhale, lift. Exhale, child's pose. And inhale, all four. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, high kneeling. And exhale back to your starting position. Great. So now you've got the kneeling sequence down. We're going to add pigeon pose. So when we get to downward dog, we'll come into pigeon pose. We'll stay there for a few breaths. So as you're ready, again, coming up, breathing in. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, all fours. Exhale, downward dog. So from downward dog, we're going to take the right knee toward the right wrist. And it, as long as it's comfortable for you, you're going to wiggle your foot to the left and slide your left leg back can bring the knee down. And then whatever space is here, you can fill that space, a blanket or a cushion, so that way you can sit right down on that hip without twisting your spine. The back foot can be flat or tucked under. And one thing here that you may find helpful actually is to take the back toes, tuck them under, lift the back knee, and reach back with that heel to really open up that hip and then release the knee down and relax the foot. From here, you can stay upright if you like, or you can come down onto your forearms. You might take your head to your hands, or you can bring your head to the ground if that's available. So whatever version works for you. And some people love pigeon. It's many people's favorite pose, and the ones who don't like it tend to really not like it. So as long as you're not feeling tension or torque in your knee, and you're not um, tensed up and kind of resisting the stretch, see if you can stay with it. If you feel like you're resisting or there's pain somewhere, come out of it anytime and go to child's pose. Otherwise, we'll take a few more breaths here. Sending your breath to where you feel tightness, maybe in that hip, the outer hip is where many people feel, but like I said, with the other a uh, similar kind of stretch. You may feel it on your inner thigh as well or other places like the hamstrings if they're tight. So 
For those of you who are wanting more challenge in this pose, if not, just stay where you are, relax. If you want a little more challenge before we come out of the pose, you can lift upright and try bringing your hands back into a more classic kind of pigeon position with that open chest. Good. The alternative here would just be to lift up and keep the hands as support. Great. When you're ready to come out, we'll tuck the back toes under, hands on either side of your front knee. You're going to lift the back knee and shift back to the other dog. Let's lower the knees. You can take whatever you've been using, moving it to the other side. Lift the head, lift the tail, breathing in. Exhale, child pose. Inhale, high kneeling, lifting all the way up. And exhale back to our starting position. So we'll go through the sequence again, this time end up with the other leg forward in pigeon. Coming up with the breath in. Good. Exhale forward, bend into child's pose. Inhaling all fours. Exhale, downward dog. So now we'll take the left knee to the ground near the left wrist and wiggle your foot to the right, stretching the right leg back. And then keeping your hips square, filling up that little space, or maybe a big space between your hip and the ground. Really check in with this knee. If there's pressure on this knee, just get the heck out of this pose. Right? It's not intended to twist your knee. So if your hip is tight, then you might say, no. You listen to that. And then if you're here and you're comfortable, you can come forward and come out into resting pigeon. Child's pose is your option. If you're not comfortable in pigeon, if something's not working for you or, or you're just not sure, make your way back to child's pose anytime. So again, we'll spend a couple of breaths here. If you like that uh, little Stretch for the back leg that we did earlier. You can try that even here, lying down, just tucking the back toes under, lifting your knee and reaching back with the heel to lengthen that leg. Let's see how that feels. So a little adjustment may or may not work for you. And again, those who want to come up in pigeon and either use the hands on the ground to find a little bit back bend here or reaching back with the arms behind you. And then when you're ready, hands come on either side of the front knee. You'll tuck your back toes under, lift up into downward dog, lower the knees. Lift the tail, lift the head, Breathing in, exhale, move to child pose. Inhale, high kneeling. And exhale to sit back on your heels or stay upright if that was your option. So once more, inhale, lift. We won't do pigeon this time, just the basic kneeling sun salutation. Child's pose, all fours. And then into downward dog, and you can stay a few breaths in downward dog if you like, maybe walking on the spot or just being still in the pose. And then when you're ready, you can lower your knees down. Just swing around to come to sit. You can bring your legs right around and find your way down onto the mat. And when you get there, bring your knees up into your chest. Do a little forward and back movement to release the back and the hips after we did the, the birds today, the eagle and the pigeon. We skip the crow pose today. That was a little more challenging with the arm balancing pose. You can circle around here.
And circle each direction if you're circling. Rock side to side. Just any movement that would feel good after the effort of the sun salutations and standing poses. And then letting your feet come to the floor, the hands can come to rest on your body where you might feel your breath. And take a few breaths here. Our theme this week is about community, about healing. Even though we don't see necessarily our loved ones, you can feel their love, their support, their care from afar. And let yourself breathe that in in any way that you feel supported by your network. Or even if it's as simple as being connected to this class and the others in it. Or feeling a connection to friends who are far away or family. Whatever nourishing connection you feel, you can breathe that feeling of connection in, letting it nourish you from the inside. And then take your arms, reach them up toward the ceiling. Reach up so your shoulder blades will lift a little bit. And then exhale and let the shoulders sink down and then your elbows to take your hands to opposite elbows. And we'll work with the twist. And you can either just move the upper body, the head and the arms going one way and the other, or if it feels good to you to do the twist for the lower body as well, you can take the knees one way as the arms and head go the other way and then back to center. And switching go slowly. If the pace works to coordinate with your breath, you exhale to the side, inhale to the center. If not, just move at a comfortable pace and breathe normally. If it feels like too much twist to do both, choose just one or the other. Great, and then let's come back to the center. And release your hands. For the next one, you want to make sure you've got something. It could be the same thing you've had under your hip for pigeon pose, a cushion or a blanket, um, or something else. So you want to have some padding for your head. And we're going to come onto our side, so you, you'll see that that's going to be um, important to keep your head aligned. So you come onto one side. We're going to take the hips first and shift them one direction. You're going to end up rolling the other way. So I'm going to lift my hips and shift them to the right a few inches, bring my knees and ankles together and bring them down to the left. And then I'm going to roll right on my left side and you can join me. And then I'm going to fill up that space underneath my head so that I'm comfortable on my side. So take your time to get there and get arranged. And then take your two hands, put them one on top of the other, and reach them right out in front of you. So right on the ground in front of you. And here we're going to make a circle with the top hand around the body on the ground. So you're going to take your top fingertips and drag them in a circle. You can bend your elbow as you come over your head, letting the arm come out to the side, come down by your hip and back to meet your other hand. So we're doing a nice big circle. You can make it really big by stretching the arm out or a little smaller. If it's better for your shoulder, bend the arm as it comes overhead. That's way easier on the shoulder. So if you feel strain in your shoulder, definitely bend the arm. And if you want more stretch and it feels okay for you, you can keep that arm straight as you go around. So you might imagine your arms as an extension of your heart. And as you create these circles, you're creating that heart space all around you. 
The next time your arm is coming out to the side, so away from the other arm, you can roll back onto your back. You want to shift your hips back to center, and you may want to bring your knees to your chest mm -hmm. for a moment, maybe four or back a few times before we move to the other side, just to release the back after the twist. And then you'll let your feet come to the floor. You're going to shift your hips the other direction now. So lifting up, shifting, bringing the knees and ankles together, letting the knees come down, rolling onto that side. You can make whatever adjustments you need to so that you're comfortable. And then you want to have that support under your head. And then two hands together on the floor, straight up through your shoulders. And then we'll make a circle with the top arm. Coming overhead, again, bending that elbow as much as you need to to let your shoulder feel supported and safe. Coming around. And again. Overhead. And around. And a few more times at your own pace. And again, at some point when that arm is coming up to the side and you're in that more open position, you can come back onto your back, shift so that you feel aligned again. And then you can either leave what's under your head there, or if it's kind of pushing your head too far forward, you can move it out of your way. And then once you get there, let's again, knees to chest. and doing a little bit of forward and back to Stretch out the lower back and release after the twist. If you want to coordinate breath here, inhale, knees away, exhale, knees in. Little circles or side to side, rocking, the knees can stay together or you can move them apart and circle them around. So just take a moment to explore what might feel good to your body in preparation for moving into Shavasana in a moment. If there is other movement that you'd like to do, please take your time to explore and stretch the legs up, perhaps maybe circle the wrists and the ankles above you. Maybe give them a shake. Again, listen to your own intuition. If there's something that would feel better to you than what I'm doing, please go for it. Knees to chest whenever you're ready. Give a little squeeze. And in your own time, you'll start to release and prepare for Shavasana. It could be Lying down, could be sitting up, could be knees bent, could be legs stretched out or knees over a bolster or anything else that would be comfortable for you. Make sure you're warm enough. So lying or sitting, whatever you like. And take a few breaths where you release to the side. <sighs> Letting go of the effort. Letting go of the movement and coming into stillness. Tuning into your breath, and as you exhale, soften a little bit more wherever you notice that you're holding. Relax your jaw, face, the muscles around your eyes and mouth.
Relax your shoulders and arms. Let's see if you can soften your hands and relax them completely. Feel your rib cage heavy as you exhale. Shoulder blades release. Rib cage softens. The belly. The abdomen releasing and softening the lower back, letting go. Feel the weight of your pelvis and soften the muscles of your hips, your buttocks, your pelvic floor. Relax and drop down through your thighs, your knees. Relax your calves, ankles, and your feet. With each exhalation, letting go wherever you might be aware of tension or holding your body. Last week, our focus was all on self-care, self-love, and as we open our hearts to include our community of friends and family, loved ones, may we do that with the wish that they be happy and free and joyful, that they feel connected, that they feel loved, that they feel supported. The chant that I'll share with you today has that sentiment wrapped up into it. And another piece that made our actions, our own actions and words contribute to the peace and to the happiness and joy of all. And so our words and our actions are called to bring connection rather than division. Loka Samasta Supino Havantu Loka Samasta Supino Havantu Loka Samasta Supino Havantu Shanti 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 If you're ready to move on with your day, I invite you to take a few deeper breaths, not straining, but full, complete breaths. Breathing in all of that support that we imagine today and breathing out your support to others, creating that balance with your breath, breathing in, feeling the love and support coming to you, breathing out and sending it out. Add 
as you're ready, you can add a bit of movement. Eventually moving and stretching any way that would feel good to you. And as you're ready, you can roll onto your side. Making your way upright in your own time. Let's take the hands and bring them together. And so we never really know how someone else is feeling. Especially with challenging feelings, we tend to hide those. So I encourage you to, as the holidays approach, when you're talking with your loved ones, your friends, families, neighbors, to really bring as much love and care to those conversations as possible, understanding that people are often not sharing how they truly feel with us. So if we can move about the world in a way that recognizes that there may be challenges and sending out love, hopefully we can bring a little more cheer. Let's take a breath in, reach up, sending that love out, Bring the hands back to the heart, one over the other this time, as if we could gather that love back in. Take a deep breath, breathing in all of that care, all of that love for yourself and from your loved ones. Imagine that feeling of support, of care. And palms together. Namaste. Have a beautiful, beautiful day.